Hi teachers, this is Ms. Bruin working in the virtual lab to try to support you during this energy unit. This video goes out to all of you in the hopes that we can put some purpose behind all of the research that your kids are doing, um, that your scientists are doing. Um, so today I'm gonna to be talking to you about holding an energy debate or an energy summit, if you will. Um, so using all of the cost benefit analysis research that your students are doing um, to have them face off against each other and give some speeches um, to put some purpose behind all of the hard work that they're doing and the facts that they're collecting. So of course, you kind of want to start this work by posing a question. And ideally, the question would actually be posed by one of your students. So you might show them a clip or show them an article of something current that's commentary on the nuclear power, nuclear power plants that we use. Um, or if your question is about comparing what they know about fossil fuels to nuclear power and deciding which one we should rely on for our energy sources, um, you could pose a question like that as well. Um, getting them to come up with the question, um, giving them the illusion that they came up with the question is a really important part of this. So I would work hard to hook them in some way, get them thinking about the topic and asking some questions before I get started. So the question didn't come from me. Um, then you're gonna get them to take a position. So. How do they feel about this? What are their opinions um, before they even get started researching? Um, and this is completely up to you. I love the idea of having them go with that initial idea. And then once they start researching, giving them the option to swap, because that's a really important piece of scientific thinking. Like once you get new information, you wanna be flexible with your thinking and revise. Um, so. You could also just have them commit to an idea and just find information based on that idea as well. Um, or you could force them to pick out of a hat and randomly they pick what they pick and it's gonna be their job to defend that idea. It's completely up to you how you wanna structure that piece of it. Um, so after you do that, you're gonna have them do some quick research. Make sure that all of the resources are angled to what they need. So you can use Padlet as a resource center for that. Um, you can also watch the Padlet video if you'd like. Um, if you're not using Padlet, you know I'm a huge supporter, a huge fan. Um, I wouldn't have been able to survive this year without it. Um, so you're gonna be guiding them to look for evidence that supports your position. And you're going to be looking at evidence that also futes your, your position or goes against your position. Um, you may want to keep track of those facts as well so you can combat them. Um, you're going to want to rely on your, argue, your argumentative units um, and some of the same tools that your students use for their personal essays or for their literary essays they will be able to use, and you should definitely pull those resources, talk to classroom teachers, um, so that you can use those as well. So teachers, from there, you're, you're wanna, gonna wanna rely on um, students to offer some different ways to take notes. Uh, you also may wanna offer them a few different structures for how they might structure their notes um, and the facts that they're finding. And from there, once you've given them the time to do that, I almost see it as like a three lesson, three or four lesson trajectory. Um, you can develop some criteria for how your debate will go. Um, and you can do that with the kids or you can start off with some bottom lines and have, the, have your students offer um, their ideas about how they want the debate to go as well. Um, now, it completely depends. You know your kids best. So you could have kids in breakout rooms or in person split up and do two on two. So the original partnerships that were taking opposite sides or opposing sides, they can argue against each other. Or you can split up those original partnerships and have students argue one on one. 
Um, you could also, I would definitely start with some kind of a fishbowl so you can, with kids who are willing and able to be observed and analyzed by the class and get feedback on the performance, um, some constructive criticism and some glows, if you will. Um, so totally up to you, but I think that doing something like this can ground and give purpose to all of the research that they've been doing having a little battle of the brains or a debate or whatever you want to call it, an energy summit. Um, it might be a bit more fun than just um, doing the work in the slideshow or on a notebook, making it come to life a little bit. I hope this was helpful and I will see you in the next video.